All right, in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you four ways that you can dilute the calories in your meals. Now, if you're new to my channel, my name is Melissa and I've lost over 30 pounds following a low calorie density way of eating. And another way of saying diluting the calories in your meals is basically how to lose weight without being hungry. Because there are two main ways that you can lose weight. One is the traditional way of dieting, which is either portion controlling or counting calories and making sure that you stay under a certain number of calories each day, or um, weighing and measuring your food and basically eating under your hunger drive and eating less food. Now there's another way, which is in my opinion, much more pleasant, especially if you're not that great at moderation, which I am not. And that is to make sure that the food that you are eating is dilute in calories. So lower in calories per bite of food. And uh, this way of eating is great for someone who is not wanting to count calories, not wanting to restrict the amount of food that they're eating. If you find that you have a big appetite and you, you like to eat big plates of food, um, like I do, then this might be helpful for you. And so at the end of this video, I'm gonna make myself some lunch and I'm gonna show you what I'm making and it's actually going to have all four of these tips applied to that meal. So. The first tip is to skip the dressings and sauces and instead opt for lemon or lime juice squeezed over your dish, some sea salt, pepper, spices. This is something that uh, I think is really key because oftentimes it's not the food itself that you're eating that is so rich in calories. It can be what you're adding on top of it. Think of a baked potato. A baked potato itself is only about 350 calories per pound, but what do people add to baked potatoes? Creamy sauces, dressings, things that are much more rich in calories and not the healthiest often. So. By opting for fresh lemon and lime juice and lots of spices, I, if you haven't watched my videos before, I am a big fan of you know, adding garlic powder and onion powder and a bit of sea salt, pepper, um, dill spice, paprika, go wild, whatever spices you really like. And I, and I really encourage people to kind of experiment with them because you might find things that you otherwise wouldn't have thought would make a great combination. And something else that I started doing um, is adding liquid smoke to my meals. And liquid smoke is essentially calorie free or very, very low in calories, but it has a hickory scent, a hickory flavor to it. And it just adds a really nice smoky taste if you like that. So um, again, sauces and dressings tend to be quite rich. And so if you are, you know, if you enjoy food, like say you make a rice dish and you squeeze some lemon and sea salt on it, you might just enjoy it as is and you might not miss the dressings as much and that's a great way to dilute the calorie of that dish without having to eat less food. Number two is to add greens. Now I share many ways to do this in my other videos, but greens like dark leafy greens like spinach and kale and you know mixed salad greens are very, very, very low in calories per bite. They're like a hundred ish calories per pound. So super, super low. And what you're doing every time you add a big handful of dark leafy greens to your smoothie or your dips that you're gonna blend all up or maybe to your soup, what that does is you're diluting the calorie density of the overall dish. And if you do this often enough, it really does make a difference. It helps keep you full because you're adding bulk to the meal um, without adding a lot of calories per bite. And again, dark leafy greens have fiber and water. Anytime that you have foods, whole natural fruit and vegetables that are high in fiber and water, you are keeping yourself full with that bulk while diluting the calories. So hopefully that makes sense. Some easy ways that you can do this are literally if you're having a smoothie, just grab a handful of spinach. Uh, it's less 
strong tasting than adding kale to your smoothie, which could kind of make it a bit bitter. So if you don't really want to have the taste of the greens, but you want to have them in there, then I recommend a handful of baby spinach. And you can mix that in with bananas and pineapple and mango and berries, and it's super yummy and you really don't even notice that it's there. Also, you can, as I said, add them to dips. This is something I'm a big fan of. So I have a recipe video where I show you my no oil fries with a black bean dip. And you just add a handful of spinach, or even if you just have a box of organic salad, just grab a handful of that, throw it in the blender with your chickpeas or your black beans or your lentils, blend it all up with your favorite spices and some lemon or lime juice. And again, you don't even really taste that it's there, but it has diluted the overall calorie density of that dip. Um, again, something I do with my soups is I will make the soup with beans, barley, veggies, whatever happens to be in there. And then once the soup is done and I scoop it out into a bowl, I'll add a handful of spinach to it and then just kind of bury the spinach with my spoon into the soup and the, um, the, the steam and the heat from the soup kind of lightly cooks the spinach um, so that it doesn't get like very mushy. That's just something else that I like to do. And there's many other ways. You can make uh, pasta dishes with broccoli and other greens, and that's another way to dilute that. So the th third tip is no dehydrated foods. Now, I have said this before, but I just wanna mention some other types of dehydrated foods that I haven't mentioned. So things like uh, the powdered peanut butter. This is a question a lot of people ask me. They say like, okay, Melissa, you said that peanut butter is over 3000 calories per pound, but what about powdered peanut butter? And the reason that I personally don't recommend it is not that it's bad for you, but if weight loss is your goal, you're eating something that takes up such little space in your stomach that's adding calories to your overall consumption of the day, but not keeping you full. Any time a food is dehydrated, the water is removed, and the water is part of what keeps you full. So there's a big difference in the calorie density of grapes versus raisins, or sun-dried tomatoes versus eating whole, fresh Roma tomatoes. And so I'm, I like a, an easy thing for you to just remember when you're making your meal is, is this dehydrated? Am I adding dehydrated ingredients to my dishes? And any time that you can make sure that the food has water content and fiber content, basically whole natural foods in their whole state as much as possible, then you're good to go. And number four is to, this is a specific tip and I guess strategy if you're on your last 10 pounds or if you're struggling losing the last little bit of weight um, and this is something that many people message me on Instagram about or send me emails about saying like Melissa this worked amazingly I can't believe I'm able to eat this much and not have to be hungry um, and not calorie count and you know I've still lost all this weight, but I can't seem to lose the last 10 or 15 pounds, or I've plateaued. And what I would say is that everyone kind of has their own equilibrium point when it comes to uh, the overall calorie density of the food that would require them to lose weight, if that makes sense. So some people can have pasta and lots of rice and lots of beans, which are kind of higher on the, um, low calorie density foods that I eat. So they're not over 700 calories per pound, but they are not dark leafy greens. So they're kind of at the higher end of what I eat, for example. Um, and for me, I can eat those things until I'm comfortably full and it doesn't make me gain any more weight. Some people based on their own metabolism or other, other reasons with their own body, um, they might need to kind of dial down the calorie density. So not eating less food, but sticking with potatoes as their wet starch instead of lots of rice and beans. So basically what I'm saying is eat more potatoes. Baked potatoes, boiled potatoes. Potatoes are one of the most satiating foods ever, if not the most satiating food per bite. 
As I said, they're about 350 calories per pound and full of fiber, full of water, actually full of a lot of nutrients, which isn't talked about all too much. And they are, they're just a fantastic and versatile food. So if you find that you're kind of plateauing or you're at that weight loss equilibrium and you do want to lose the last 10 pounds, then I recommend maybe switching or even having the amount, halving, having, halving, cutting the amount in half of, of rice, pasta, quinoa, barley, millet, and instead having more potatoes and sweet potatoes. And if you love potatoes, then this is good news because rice, for example, depending if it's white rice or brown rice or what type of rice is around 550 to 600 calories per pound, whereas potatoes, as I said many times now, are about three to 350 calories per pound. Now that might not sound like a big difference. 200 calories per pound difference, it isn't a big deal when it comes to one day of eating. But what happens when you multiply that effect by an entire month, that could be the difference between you losing another two pounds that month or not if you happen to be at that equilibrium. So again, just to run through this list, um, and I'm filming this video without making any cuts or edits to it. So if it does sound like I'm a little bit all over the place, bear with me. I'm trying to get used to kind of freestyling my videos a little bit more. Um, so the four steps are one, skip the sauces and the dressings and opt for lemon, lime, spices, uh, apple cider vinegar, and uh, liquid smoke if you like that. Two, up the amount of dark leafy greens that you're consuming, green vegetables in general, and find unique ways to add them into your meals because what this is doing is diluting the overall calorie density of that dish. Number three is no dehydrated foods. Number four is opt for potatoes. If you're trying to lose that last 10 pounds and you're currently eating a lot of rice, beans, barley, and uh, yeah. So hopefully that is helpful for you. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and uh, let me know let me know what you thought of the video. Come say hi in the comment section down below. And uh, if you're not yet following me on Instagram, you can find me at melissaalexandria01. Come say hi over there as well. I'm currently doing a 30 day 5 a.m. challenge. So come over and help keep me accountable. I show the time that I woke up every single morning on my Instagram stories to keep me accountable and try to get me back into that habit that I really, really want to have, that early morning riser, because it just makes me feel my best. And uh, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and make some lunch. I will show you what I'm having, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye. All right, so here's everything that is going to go into my lunch. If you wanna try recreating this meal or something similar, you can uh, take a screenshot of this so you have all of the ingredients in one photo. And so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a big handful of dark leafy greens. I'm going to slice up the two Roma tomatoes and I am going to cook on the stove top the potatoes and onion. And then I'm gonna warm up some of the corn uh, on another little pan on the stove top as well. And this is all the seasoning that I'm using. We've got garlic powder, onion powder, paprika, dill, lime juice, and a little bit of liquid smoke, and some sea salt as well. So this is a very typical meal that I eat, and uh, I recommend it because it's very filling and it's got a little bit of lots of good things. All right, so I've let the potato and onion mixture cool a little bit, and same with the corn, but I'm just gonna mix them together in this big mixing bowl so that I can season them and just get all the flavor all over everything. So I've got the lime juice, and I'm not measuring, I'm just putting a bit of a splash in there. Same with the liquid smoke. And the other nice thing about eating this way is it's quite inexpensive, so you end up saving money. Got salt, adding some salt in, and 
We're gonna add in our garlic powder, onion powder, and now I'm just adding in all of these spices. Dill spice. Get a good mix together. All right, there we go. Super easy, very filling meal. And I recommend always making a bit extra so that if you're hungry in another hour or two, you don't really have to start prepping more food. You can just go back and eat what's left in the pot.